thank you this morning for what I feel in my heart. I praise you, thank you today. You know, I woke up with a headache this morning. The devil said, why don't you just lay in the bed today? And I thought, no, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to church. I'm going where I need to be, where I'm supposed to be. And I just praise him this morning that I'm here today for what I feel in my heart. As I look back on all of my days, so many times, in so many ways, I have been blessed. All I can say, God has been
been times when I've let him down, made my mistakes, but still I have found I may stumble and fall, but through it all, God is still good. Mercy still flows from the palm of his hand. He will give grace. Good morning. Welcome everybody back out again to the house of the Lord. I was sitting there thinking our whole service seems like it's been themed already around God being good. Really ought to be the theme every day of our life because he's good to us every day. But what a blessing. What a blessing it is to be here this morning. I believe Alvin's going to sing. I, I, I requested Alvin sing real, real strongly. So he's going to do one for us.
struggle with what to know what to sing, and I guess I'll just default to what I've sung a lot here and over the years is just potter in the clay. And that is my heart's desire is to be like Christ. Amen. Uh, appreciate that. Uh, again, as Robin mentioned about the Sunday school lesson about the Good Shepherd, we do have a Good Shepherd, and I appreciate Amen. that. Uh, Randy talked about the day that uh, we were saved, and I, and I remember that I was in fourth grade. And uh, I'd felt conviction at a revival before then, but I didn't move. And that night, conviction came to my heart. And a uh, young boy and was a little embarrassed, and the church seemed full. I don't know if it was or not, but it seemed it was in my mind. And it seemed like it was a long ways from the back of the church to the front. And I remember thinking, gosh, I hate to go up in front of all those people. And the scripture that came to me was where Christ talked about, if you're ashamed of me, before this generation, I'll be ashamed of you before my father. And I thought there's going to be a lot more people there on Judgment Day than there is here in this church tonight. And I'm glad that uh, that he gave his life for us and he is our good shepherd and, and his grace is sufficient. I appreciate that so much. Potter, hear the clay saying, mold me in thy way. That I may share this love that's still in me. Thy skillful hands perform the task just like the Lord's all I ask. And Father, let your spirit breathe on me. I'm just a handful of Potter found along the way, and I'll never know what Jesus sees in me. But I won't try to understand, just be yielding in your hand, and all I ask. Trials to strengthen me, let others see my faith in thee. Dear Lord, don't let me be away too far. My vessel filled up to the rim, spilling your love all over them. Just like thee, I long to be, and Lord, that's I'm just a handful of clay the potter found along the way. And I'll never know what Jesus sees in me. But I won't try to understand, just be yielding in your hand and all. Anybody else have a special song, testimony? Before Kevin comes, I would like to mention, I didn't Wednesday night and I didn't this morning. I want to thank everybody for all the work went into homecoming last week, last few weeks really, but we had a great homecoming service. and Not that it matters, but the food was great. It was, we really enjoyed the homecoming. All right, Kevin, come on. Good morning. Good to be in the house of the Lord today. If you're visiting with us, we welcome you. We've got some visitors. Every Sunday there's someone new. Uh, and that's a blessing, ain't it? We, we, I take it... Uh, Take it seriously that folks come and want to be be a part of us, and uh, and uh, we welcome you from wherever you're from, and and uh, pray that you've already felt welcome, 
And uh, I take that seriously too. I've heard people say, well, uh, I visited your church and, and I felt welcome. And, uh, and that means a lot. It really does. And uh, we've got some, got some good folk here and, and, and uh, make you feel welcome. So uh, appreciate that. Most of all, I always want the Spirit of the Lord to be here because that's the most warmest welcome you can have. I mean, you can be, you know, if you're saved and you're in the Lord's house, you should be at home anywhere you go, right? It's sad to say it's not always that case, uh, but, uh, but I'm, uh, it, it, it ought to be. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty, right? There's freedom. And you ought to feel at home in, in God's house, no matter what's on the uh, sign uh, of, the, of the church door. But, um, but uh, I'm thankful that uh, God, uh, uh, He's welcome here, and His presence is welcome here. Without Him, we're nothing. Without Him, we can't have church. Without Him, lost people can't be saved this morning. Uh, it takes his, his drawing spirit for people to come to know the Lord. It takes His presence for people to be strengthened, for, for folks that are discouraged to be encouraged, for uh, things to happen, for needs to be met. It takes the Spirit of God. Uh, what did He tell the woman uh, at the well? He said, God is the Spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth, for He seeketh such to worship Him. We can't worship Him any other way, can we? Do him by the Spirit of God, and we're very, very thankful for His presence. And that's kind of what's on our mind today. Is uh, is the uh, uh, the Holy Spirit of God? And uh, uh, James chapter number five, and verse number seven. You find your place. Stand with us, in reverence of God's word. James chapter number 5 and verse number 7. <clears throat> the Bible says, Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth, and hath long patience for it, until he has received the early and latter rain. Uh, but ye also, be ye also patient. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth Nigh, grudge not one against another, brethren, lest ye be condemned. But behold, the judge standeth uh, before the door. And I'll, uh, I'll stop there. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the reading of your word. And I just pray today, God, that you just get us out of the way. And Lord, you give us exactly what we stand in need of. Lord, we love you and we, we thank you, uh, Lord, for your presence. And we just pray, Lord, at your Holy Spirit, continue to be with us and speak to every heart, meet each and every need. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Now, I begin to think this morning of uh, um, the, the early and latter rain, what that meant. And um, in, the, in the book of Joel, um, it's prophesied and spoke about uh, the, the early and latter rain in Joel chapter number uh, 2, in, in, in verse number 28, it says, And it shall come to pass after that I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions. And, um, and uh, it also uh, speaks there also um, in uh, Joel 2, uh, 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 or 2.23 as well, but, but uh, begin to think about the early and latter rain. And what that early rain uh, speaks about when seed sowing time. And uh, when seed is sown, uh, crops are sown, there's that early rain, that spring, and April showers. And um, as an old saying, April showers bring May uh, flowers. And, and so that's considered what you'd say is the early rain. But uh, as the crops, uh, as, as they, they germinate, they have to 
the seed has to germinate and it has to have water to germinate, right? Uh, you can sow seed and there's no water on it, it won't germinate. But it takes water. And so uh, uh, after that seed germinates and begins to grow, um, there's uh, considered uh, what they call the, the latter rain. The latter rain is, uh, is before the harvest. Uh, that, uh, that rain is very crucial for, uh, for that crop to, to get uh, the moisture, the amount of moisture it needs to produce the fruit that it needs uh, especially during flowering time, uh, potatoes uh, needs uh, needs water when they're blooming. That's a crucial time for uh, for taters to to really produce uh, is when they're when they're when they're blooming. It needs water, don't it? And uh, and and so it just like not only potatoes but it, other crops before the harvest needs the latter rain. And so. Uh, um, you begin to think there in James chapter number 5, as I read, the Bible says, Be ye therefore, uh, uh, be, be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth, and hath long patience for it, until he had received the, the early and latter rain. Be patient, establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Now begin to think about that uh, that early and latter rain, speaking about the, uh, 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 basically spiritually speaking, uh, you think about the early uh, the early rain uh, would be considered there in the book of Acts chapter number two, and that's when the Lord told the disciples before that He ascended. He said, "Tear ye here at Jerusalem, for soon ye shall be endued with power from on high." And that Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit of God that He spoke about in John chapter number 14. He said, I'll not leave you comfortless, but I will come to you. And the Comforter that I shall bring, send you I shall bring all things back to remembrance whatsoever I have told unto you. And He'll teach you in all things the things that you need to do. And the, also the Holy Spirit of God give them power in Him. So that, that on the day of Pentecost... They were waiting in the upper room on the early rain, wouldn't they? Amen. The Holy Spirit of God, they were in one mind and one accord. I mentioned this not long ago, just a service or two ago. How, what it would be like if everybody would come to church at the same time, in the same frame of mind, not distracted on anything else, not distracted on what happened this week or what's going on in our life, but uh, uh, focused on one thing, and that's the Holy Spirit of God filling us up today. Amen. 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 That, that's, that's what a good service is all about, is God having His right away. But the Bible says, quench not the Spirit of God. God's uh, Spirit can be easily offended. And I believe sometimes that we offend the Holy Spirit of God because simply we're, we're distracted. We're distracted. We're, 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 we've got our mind on so many other things. And the Bible says where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Sometimes our treasure is in other, other things, other places other than the, than the things of God. Amen. Some of us, we might be wrapped up in sports and uh, sports is more important or, or, or maybe some of us might be wrapped up in our work and, and, and that's easily done, isn't it? Some of us might be wor uh, wrapped up in, 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 in providing and making money and, 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 and just, uh, uh, just, uh, 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 you know, really, really growing in, in the, you know, maybe in the workforce, and we're we're occupied with that, and uh, I, I, we're we're uh, maybe some of us are going through sicknesses and different things. See, there's different distractions in every every part of life, aren't they? I mean, f physical sickness can get, cause us to become di distracted, won't it? Amen. But uh, but but they were in one mind and one accord, one mind and one accord. They had one thing in mind, and that was the promise of God. He said, before Jesus left, He told us to come up here. 
He told us to gather together and, and, and come to Jerusalem for soon we shall be endued with power from on high. There's no way we can preach the gospel. There's no way that we can uh, start the early church. Uh, there's no way that things can keep going uh, the way it needs to go without Him coming. That's why that they were in the upper room because they knew they couldn't go another day without the Lord. Amen. There's no way you and I can go another day without the Lord. Amen. We need the presence of the Lord. We need God's help. Amen. What would you come to church for today? Amen. What's on your mind today? Is your mind to get help from God? Amen. Amen. He said if you, uh, whatever we desire, amen, we need to ask Him, amen. He said whatsoever you pray, I pray in faith, believing nothing wavering. Amen. I believe sometimes we come in a form and a fashion. We didn't have to come to church today. We got to come to church today. And if you look at it any other way, you're not getting what you need. You're distracted this morning. It's a privilege. It's a privilege. And a lot of people, uh, uh, somewhere uh, along in your line, uh, life, that, uh, that privilege might be taken away. Amen. Your health might, might uh, prevent you from coming to church. And, and, and I'm sure there's a lot that, that, that can't go to church now. And, 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 and they realize it's a privilege. Man, I've had even people say this to me in later years and say, Preacher, I regret when, when I couldn't come to church, when, uh, or when I didn't come, I was able to come to church at one time and didn't. Now I can't go to church and I want to. They're regretting not being able to come and assemble themselves in the house of God. I know you, you can serve God anywhere. I know you can pray anywhere. But there's something special about the sanctioned house of God. Amen. Amen. There's a reason why that God put it in David's heart to build God a place to dwell in. Amen. 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 A, a sanctuary for the Lord. There's a reason why Solomon, I mean, it wasn't God's will for, for David to, 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 to go out and, and, and basically, he, he went and got the ark, basically, but, but he, didn't, he didn't build the temple because he was a man of war. But, but Solomon, God, it was God's will that Solomon build the temple. And, God, and, and, and Solomon built the temple, I believe he built it by the best that money could buy. I read in history one time, it said that, that it wasn't the biggest building, but it was the most expensive building. Uh, gold, everything you read about it, everything was, it was overlaid in gold. Amen. If it was made of wood, it was, it was overlaid in gold. Everything was to the best uh, uh, for God. And you know what? When they got it built, uh, uh, they began to dedicate it to the Lord. And they said, uh, I wanted God to bless the building. wanted God to fill the house. And that's exactly what God did. God filled the house that day. The, the cloud, the cloud that led the children uh, uh, by day and the fire by night, the cloud filled the house that day that the ministers couldn't even minister. Uh, uh, where, uh, uh, where, God, uh, uh, where God was ministering that day and filled the, the temple with His presence. Amen. When God blesses, friend, you're doing well. Amen. It's very important that the Holy Spirit of God has His right away every service. Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. <coughs> you mean Wednesday night? Yes. We've had some of the, we've had revival meetings on Wednesday night. But you know how God blesses like that? When God becomes important to you again. When God becomes important more than anything else in life. When God becomes important. I think other things, our priorities is out of line a lot of times. Everything else is important. We, we don't have time. I had a lady tell me one time in the hospital. Uh, I believe it was uh, when Corbin was in the hospital when he was born. I, I asked a nurse, I said, uh, where do you go to church? And she looked at me and she said, I don't have time to go to church. And I said, well, you're going to have time to die. Stand before the Lord. What are you going to do then? I 
I mean, that's just, that's just the way things are. She didn't have to say, but I pray that, that the Lord sowed that little seed and made her think, hey, all this work in my fingers to the bone, I mean, I mean, going to church doesn't save you by no means, but I need church. I need the presence of God in my life. I need to know God's going with me. Amen. Moses, Moses said, Lord, I've got to know from now on, from this day forth, you're going to go with us. I'm not going to go another step until, Lord, show me your glory. How long has it been since you've got serious with God and said, God, I need some rain. I need some rain, Lord. I feel like I'm drying up. Now, let's, let's think about this a minute. I thought about this the other day. I was sitting on the porch Friday morning, and, um, and, and, and I've been trying to do that a lot lately. And, and I tell you, it, it's helping me. Uh, but uh, anyway, I was sitting on the porch the other morning, and there was, there was a share of rain come around 6.30, 6.45, come this way, uh, uh, basically from, from Cherokee Road, I guess. And then, just in 20 minutes, there's another share of rain coming uh, across the mountain this way. And it, and, and it was coming pretty good. You could hear it. And then you could, you could see it, just a big white sheet. And you could, you could feel it. And, and I, 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 just, I began to think about the, the former and the latter rain. And then I got to looking at my garden. And you just remember... In the month of June, it was a dry time. It was a dry time, and 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 I I, th- I thought we was gonna we were gonna have nothing. Uh, when we got irrigation and, and and tried to keep stuff alive, and and uh, and and uh, and it, uh, it it looked pretty pretty dry there. But but then the rain come. Dog days, as they call it, and 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 we we probably had one of the wettest seasons we've we've had. But look, however, that what made it what what that made a difference. Look at everything. I mean, our garden has done well. Uh, the, the 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 beans and and the corn and and look at apple trees. Apple trees are loaded. Uh, people's people's fruit trees are are are, are really bearing good. Look what that rain did. It, it produced things. So it was well needed. I know a lot of us, well, we got tired of the rain. Well, we wouldn't, we wouldn't, uh, we wouldn't really talking much about uh, uh, that uh, in June, would we? It was a dry time. We needed rain. Amen? And, 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 but, but you think about the Spirit of God, spiritually speaking... In our life, we'll go through dry times. And I believe, well, I don't believe, I know. I know that a lot of us have been going through some dry times. Amen? There's a bunch of us that's going through dry times. And, 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 and I'll even go on to say this. God's put some of you on my mind. And I know you're going through dry times. I know you, you're going through some, some, some dry spells. But I believe God is bringing back to our remembrance that, that the rain's going to come. Now let's think about Elijah there. He went to Ahab and he said it ain't going to rain for three and a half years. And it didn't. It was a dry time. There was a famine in the land when there's a drought, things don't grow. Crops don't grow, and th- crops don't grow, you don't eat. People uh, begin to suffer, but God, uh, God supplied the need for His people. God supplied the a need down there at the brook of Jer- Cherith. There for uh, Elijah, he said, I've uh, commanded a raven to feed thee, bring thee bread and flesh in the morning, bread and flesh in the evening. And he drank of that brook, but the time come that the brook dried up, and God said, now it's time to move, it's time to go to Zarephath. I've commanded a widow woman down there to sustain thee, and that little widow woman, 
woman was a gathering two sticks, some, some, some sticks together to make her and her son a, 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 a cake of bread because that's the last a, a meal she had, just a handful of meal and a little bit of oil in the cruise and they're going to eat it and they're going to die. Uh, but as you know the story, the man of God said, would you, would you uh, fetch me a little water? And she went to get him some water and he, as she was going, he said, would you make me a little cake of bread? She said, as the Lord God liveth and as I so live it, I've got just a little handful of meal. And me and my son was going to eat it and we was going to die. That was it. It was going to be it. That's all I got. He said, make me a cake first. But as the Lord God liveth, as I so liveth, that barrel will never fail. Nor that cruise will fail. And it did. She done exactly what the man of God said. God sent provision. Amen. So then it, then it went by that, that it was time for Elijah to stand against the prophets of Baal. And he said, how long are we going to be, uh, uh, how, how long are we going to halt between two opinions? If God be God, serve him. But today we're going to find out. God, God sent down the fire. Amen. And he, he uh, consumed that altar that Elijah built. Elijah built and then Elijah, he, uh, he uh, 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 killed the prophets of Baal there. Now just, now just remember, all the, all the time there was no rain. He sent his servant out and he said, he said, I want you to go and look for I hear a sound of abundance of rain. Three and a half years went by and it had been not a drop. Not a little mist. But he looked at his servant. He said, go out John and look. He said, I, I hear a sound of abundance of rain. He went and he'd see something. But, it, but he went back and he, and he come back with a message. And he said, I see a little cloud about the size of a man's hand. Well, it ain't a big cloud. But listen. God don't need a big cloud to send the rain, friend. You don't need a big situation to happen uh, to send deliverance. Amen. A cloud is the size of a man's hand. You can't even hardly see it. I, I barely see it in the sky. But listen, God sent the rain in three and a half years. What I'm saying is deliverance is coming, friend. Deliverance is going to come whether the Lord is coming. Amen. I know He is, but don't know when. Amen. But if He don't come tomorrow, He will sustain every one of us. Every one of us, He will sustain us. That's a promise. Until he comes and gets us, he will send deliverance. And that deliverance, that latter rain, will produce some fruit. Amen. That latter rain produced fruit before the harvest. It's very important that God's people are fruitful in the day and age we live in because there's people that needs to eat off your tree. They're not ready to meet the Lord if there's to die lost. If there's to die today and die lost, they die and go to hell. So they need you and I uh, to live the life that we need to be living. We need to get encouraged in the Lord and not be discouraged. Not to hide our, uh, a light under a bushel, but uh, put it on a candlestick that it giveth the light to the whole house uh, that it giveth light to wherever you're at uh, people you work with people you live with people you're around they need to see the Lord in you amen, amen. amen. begin to think about deliverance he, he said behold the days will come I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh pour my spirit upon all flesh I think about what Hebrews said. He said, there'll come a day that where, uh, when my new covenant, I'll make a new covenant. He said, where, where no one will say one to another, know the Lord. He said, forever one shall know me from the least to the, to the, to the oldest. Amen. What I'm saying is today, no one will ever leave here without having an opportunity to meet the Lord. Uh, to accept the Lord, excuse me. To, to, to know the Lord is their personal Savior. No matter what their nationality is. 
No matter where they live, no matter their background, no, no matter the culture, everyone that leaves this walk of life will have an opportunity to accept Jesus as their Savior. Now you think about it. He said, go into all nations and preach the gospel. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Go into all nations. So you think about what the gospel's done. What the Holy Spirit of God did on the day of Pentecost. It rained on the whole world that day. Now you think about it. The gospel started in that, in that particular come out of Nazareth. Started come out of Nazareth, right? What did, what did Philip say? He said, is there any good thing to come out of, come out of Nazareth? He said, come and see. Started, started there in Bethlehem. But look how, because of the Holy Spirit of God sending the latter rain, the Holy Spirit of God was poured out. And it rained upon all mankind. And we've all got a chance to go to heaven now. Does that make sense? What the gospel has done is given everybody that's a child of God, them disciples, they got power. He, they received power to preach the gospel in boldness. I mean, when everybody looked at them and, and they, they thought that they were ignorant and unlearned men, but they saw their boldness, they stood for what was right and stood for the gospel, no matter what the cost was, they took knowledge that they had been with Jesus. Right? Because they had power with God. The shadow of Peter healed people. They brought people out on couches, laid them beside the road, for with the shadow of Peter that he might heal. That was the power of God in him, not in Peter. Things hadn't changed. The Holy Spirit of God's the same. You can have God on you today. But it's how much of God you want. And we got all of him when we got saved. Right? We got all of him when we got saved, but it's how much of he, us he's getting. We need to, because listen, when we are full of the Spirit of God, we're allowing God to guide us. And let me say, when you're full of the Spirit of God, you deal with things a whole lot better. Have you noticed that? When you become weak in the Spirit, you just don't deal with life like you should. Things get too easy. Things get you just out of whack. But when, buddy, when you're when you're in the cloud, when you're when when you're when you're just a, a, a focused upon the Lord, seems like the, the distractions of things. And I spoke about Peter walking on the water Wednesday night. He got distracted. That's why he began to sink. That's not a picture of a lost person. No, that's a picture of a saved person getting distracted because of the ways and boisterous of the ways and the, the things of life getting us down. I believe a lot of us have been sinking lately. Distracted with a lot of things. And, uh, but, but listen, Peter was walking on the water. He was walking above the storm. You too can walk above the storm today. But it's your choice. He said, draw nigh to me and I'll draw nigh to you. How much drawing are we doing lately? I mentioned this analogy before, but it, it makes a lot of sense. When you're fishing, you got slack in your line, you cannot feel what's on the other end. I believe me and Stanley Edwards was fishing years ago, and I was eating, which I do a lot, and I had slack in my line, and I was talking. I didn't know I had nothing on there, but... I got in eating my sandwich, and I picked up on the, on the slack. I had a fish on. I mean, that line was just, it was just running. And I set the hook. How many times? Saved people. 
We're hooked up with Jesus Christ if you're saved. Right? When you got slack in your line, you can't feel that bump bump like you used to. Like you need to. We need to feel that bump bump. Amen. But because we got slack, and sometimes we get slack, amen? We get slack on the Lord. But it ain't God that's slack, it's us that's slacking up. We slack up on a prayer life, we slack up on reading God's Word. When you slack up on them too right there, you get distracted. You get your mind on other things. You get slack in your life. And then you come to the house of God. What's the matter with that preacher? What's the matter with that choir? What's the matter with them singing? Can't feel nothing in it. Is it them or is it you? We can become real good critics. Just make sure, make sure you've got a tight line before you start criticizing somebody. Hey, man. Make sure how, uh, you've got your line good and tight. That you've got good connection with the Lord. It's good, to, I mean, it's easy to judge people. But the Bible says, judge not that you be not judged. With the same judgment you judge, ye shall be judged. What measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. Right? None of us lived in a, lives in a, in a perfect, perfect vessel. We're all, we all got faults and failures about us. But we need the Spirit of God. We need this latter rain. Man, you, you need what God wants to give you. Because you can't make it another day without the Lord. You can't get done what needs to be done in your life. Your purpose in life is not in your plans. It's not in your will. It's in the will of God. I believe our lifelong lesson that God teaches us. It's not in our occupation. It's not in how much money we can make in life. It's about God's will being done in our life that, that our light may shine no matter where we're at. No matter what job we do, no matter what college we go to, no matter what uh, uh, high school we're at, no matter what grade school we're at. Uh, amen. God can use all of us in all ages. Amen. I believe God can use preschools all the way up. Amen. God can use you. Let me just say this. I, this young man uh, mentioned to me the other day, 13 years old, I believe, profound words come out of this young man. We were sitting at a grocery store in the parking lot and uh, this young man was with us, and, and uh, we was waiting on Tiffany to go in and get something and come back out. And there was a man standing there, and and uh, and he was uh, he was you could tell he was he was maybe something wasn't right, and uh, just a little little difference, a little out of the ordinary. And uh, the young man spoke up in the back, and he said, "You ever watch people and?" Just sit somewhere in public and watch people and pray for them. I said, uh, uh, do what? He said, you ever just sit somewhere in public and just watch people and just kind of pick somebody out and just pray for them? And uh, I think one of the boys said, well, where, where'd you hear uh, that from? Did you hear that from your, from your uncle that's a preacher? He said, No. I just do that sometimes. Well, I thought about that. And I actually told him, I said, you said something that really stuck out to me because it's very easy to sit and watch people and judge people. It's very easy to sit at somebody maybe that's sitting on the side of the road and holding a sign for help. Very easy to become judgmental. Well, that person needs to get to work. Or that person, I mean, hey, we've all done it. I've, I've thought the same things at times, especially nowadays when everybody's hiring. But we're very quick to be, become judgmental. 
instead of saying, well, that person needs this and this and this, has it ever occurred to us that that person needs Jesus? That really spoke to me. That that just really grabbed a hold of me. A 13-year-old boy preached a good little message to a preacher. You ever just sit and watch people? Pick you somebody out and pray for them. I believe that we can make a difference. In a dark day that we're living, we can make a difference. You say, well, I ain't ain't much. None of us are. But we are through Him. We can make a difference. We We can make a big impact by bringing our lunch. Having something to offer somebody. That little boy... Brought two little fish and five loaves of bread and fed over, well, 5,000 beside women and children. You just think about it. If every man had a wife, that was 10,000. And if every man and woman had a youngin, and they had more than one, (laughs) a lot of them had, most of them had more, Probably some of them dozens. And and then, you think about it, so at least 15,000 people, two little fish, five loaves of bread by one little boy are bringing his lunch. Did you bring your lunch today? Did you bring something for Jesus? Man, you have something to offer somebody? You got something to offer. You got something to say. Always be ready to give an answer if anybody asks you the hope that lies within you. We become quiet because we're so wrapped up in other things. If somebody asked you how to be saved, could you tell them? If you can't, it's time to get at it. It's time to check up and say, Lord, I've got my priorities way out of line. And we do sometimes. And I believe that's why God has brought this message today, just to kind of give us an eye-opening wake up. Is Where's your priorities? Where's your priorities today? Is, are you being fruitful? Are you being fruitful? Is it, and, and, and do you desire, have you asked the Lord for rain? Now, I, I, I'll tell you, when it gets dry down there at the house, I pray for rain. I do. Lord, you know we need it, but I'm going to ask you, Lord, we need a little rain. And God sent the rain. Some may say, well, I sent too much. God sends exactly what we need. Amen. You and I, we don't know how to pray as we ought. That's what Romans eight twenty six tells us. We don't know how to pray as we ought, but the Spirit... Make it intercession with our groanings and it cannot be uttered. He takes your prayers a lot higher than what you can get them. But listen, He hears you. You need what God has. You need His power. You need His strength. But it's up to you if you want it. Solomon was the wisest man ever lived before him or after him because he asked for it. He asked for God's wisdom. God blessed him with more than what he asked for, didn't he? With riches and, and honor. But... But I believe, I believe, you know what Solomon would say, the most valuable thing, but wasn't my riches, it was the wisdom that God gave me. What God, the spiritual blessings of God is worth more than anything. That's the message. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Lord, we thank you today. I pray, God, that you challenge us all today. Challenge our hearts and help us, I pray, to get our priorities where they need to be. Jesus first, others next, and ourselves last. But I believe sometimes, God, that we, we try to put ourselves in, 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 uh, ahead of everything. and God, it's all about, all about us and all about me, all about uh, my four no more sometimes. But God, help us to get our priorities where it needs to be. Forgive us, God. Of betraying you, Lord. Forgive us, God, if sometimes 
rebelling against you like we do. Maybe in our actions. Might be in our words, might be in our actions. God help us. Help us, Lord, I pray. Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen.